Hi friends, Nicole here. We're going to talk about the full moon this weekend. Um, I've seen a lot of things pop up on YouTube and other places and social through social media. And I feel like there are parts and pieces that people are missing. So first of all, this full moon is an important one uh, because of this year's, where the nodes of the moon are this year, uh, the fact that we've had Mercury retrogrades, we will ha continue to have them July, November, in water signs uh, with the nodes of the moon and Cancer and Capricorn, which are the archetypes that have to do with our deepest Cancer, uh, most emotional material. Cancer is an archetype that we develop when we are an infant. We develop when we are completely dependent upon our mother and when our psyche still thinks we're sort of one with the mother, okay? So it's a, it's a highly reactive, unconscious part of the self. And on the other hand, we have the uh, south node is in, in Capricorn right now, so which is also where Pluto's at, which is also where Saturn is. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the full moon from the perspective of uh, like we're watching a play uh, on stage. So I want us to sort of personify each of the planets to think about them as they're, they're going to act out a little mini skit for us and they're going to show us the quality of the time that we are currently all experiencing. Okay. Now, just like if it's a rainy day outside, some people will go out on a rainy day and they hate it because it reminds them of, I don't know, something from their childhood. Maybe they're from a place where it was just rainy all the time. I personally love the rain, but, or maybe they love it. It's the same thing with your transit, with your transiting planets. So this is not, it, it, this is not uh, one size fits all. And depending upon your personal chart, where you're at in your Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, psychological Cardinal Cross, depending on where you're at in your individuation, your development, this full moon's going to affect you uh, in many different possible ways. Now, overall, let's do the, the, the basics here. Okay. The full moon's going to be it will be exact tomorrow in the morning, early morning, uh, like 412 West Coast, like 712 AM East Coast, something like that. I'm getting that mixed up. It's like five, it's 612 here. Am I saying that wrong? 512, sorry. So 412, yeah. So early morning, most of us will probably be asleep or just waking up. And it really, when you're talking about the full moon, you pay attention to the day before, the day of, the day after. It's kind of a three day uh, span of time, which mythologically is perfect for sort of think of the three muses. You can think of past, present, future. You can think of phases of the moon. But anyhow, with this particular full moon, uh, if you recall, when the moon is full, she is on stage. She is big. She is bright. It's her moment to take all of the attention. It's as though we're watching a play and the sun, which if the moon is up, if you're looking at it at nighttime, the sun will have it's on the opposite side of the earth. So it's going to be set. And it's like the, the um, person who's in charge of the lights, you know, they're like shine the light on the moon. And so she sort of takes center stage. And also if you've seen that movie, uh, legend with the unicorns with Tom Cruise, it's like from forever ago. If you're born like in the nineties, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but if you're my age, you probably know there's a scene where they're like fighting the devil and they have these big metal shields and they use them to reflect the light. It goes beer, 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 like bounces off of things. Okay. That's kind of like what aspects are. Okay. So with the moon being at 29 degrees of Libra in the tropical Zodiac, we know we're dealing with, uh, emotional material that ties into, cause it's the moon, our deep unconscious learned and conditioned from our childhoods, from when we were a baby and even a little toddler when we were dependent. It's from that stage of life. What does that material look like? If we had trauma when we were little, that's gonna show up during times where we have strong lunar influence, okay? Because it's pulling forward. Don't ask me how the mechanism works, but it does. Uh, it pulls forward from us emotional content. It's a cycle of time, you know? The moon moves in a steady cycle, constant. She's always changing, but she's always constant. So now if you're to pretend like we're sitting, we're watching this play, if you've got the chart pulled up, the moon, all of a sudden the stage is all dark and the light shines on the moon, right? And let's say she's singing a song. She's a Libra moon. She's singing a very beautiful aria and it is about um, love. It is, it's about relationships. It's about understanding and what's fair and what isn't fair. And at the same time, this moon, because of course she's opposite the sun, the sun is just about 
to join up with Uranus. So the sun is moving. So it's like in the shadows on the stage, pretend you can see uh, our, our hero. You know, the sun is in Aries, the last degree of Aries. And anytime we have anything at the last degree, the anoretic degree, there's an extra added emphasis. It's like, you know, the song when the fat lady sings, it's like at the end of the, it's at the end of the opera, right? That's 29th degree. So he's in the shadows, the sun in Aries, okay, our hero. And he's about, he sees Uranus. Let's pretend like Uranus is like a storm or something. Um, or actually, no, Uranus is like a bandit in the woods hiding that the, the hero is moving towards. And maybe the hero actually doesn't necessarily see Uranus, okay? And let's say that over across the way, the meadow, we have our singing moon, the full moon. She's she's singing her aria or whatever. Um, and it's like, at the same time, you've got these these two sets of characters and then over and on another part of the stage, forming the apex of a T-square is Pluto. And Pluto is at 23 degrees. And so our moon and our sun will have already moved past exact squares to Pluto, right? And so they've also moved past exact, you know, they, they've moved past squares to the nodes of the moon. So there's kind of an element here of us looking to the past, South Node and Capricorn, looking to the past, looking at the grown-ups that were in our life when we were younger who had responsibility to take care of us, to protect us, to be our guardians, okay? And this particular south node with Pluto right here, Pluto is like, he's like the private investigator, okay? Pluto and Capricorn, look at what happened today. We had the, the Mueller, <laughs> my friend messaged me, Mueller time, yeah, you know, the Mueller report was, was released. Things come to the surface because the investigator finds them and uncovers them. But I feel like he's, um, I've been like addicted lately to, um, to what's his name? Um, oh my gosh, my brain. You know the private detective show, Sherlock Holmes. Pluto's like Sherlock Holmes. He's like looking around in there, very slow moving, very careful. Um, so the sun and the moon, our hero and our sort of heroine, our, you know, these two characters are about to find something out or maybe they just did find something out actually. A week ago six days ago okay five days ago and the moon today as I'm filming this is currently exactly square Pluto so right now emotionally I was like all day I've just been feeling really weird I was born on a full moon I don't know if that that has something to do with it but full moons always I feel them even if I don't let's say I'm out of the loop and I don't even know where the moon's at that day if it's a full moon I can't sleep and I just have all these weird things that come to the surface. So if you've been feeling the same way, that's very normal. Uh, you can ask doctors and people who are in law enforcement, um, even military, like there's something about the full moon that does bring out in people a more uh, chthonic, animalistic, instinctive, reactive part of the psyche. I don't know how. Okay, so with this T-square, it's like we know that, the, that our investigator, he's kind of watching things. In your life, in your relationships, a lot of people within the last couple of days have found things out about someone they love. And it's a story that was completely different from a story that they had hoped they would hear. Okay. Or a story that kind of, um, they may even have an old story that they're clinging to still hoping that that is still an accurate story. Okay. Well, in our play, it's like our hero doesn't see is about to hit Uranus, okay? So it's like the shit's about to hit the fan kind of a thing, you know? Um, I should have thought through my metaphor a little bit better, but Uranus being, let's say that Uranus is like, um, because Uranus is always here to teach us through our mind. It will make us feel crazy, especially during a full moon. This is lining up with our two planets that will most acutely um, shock and zap your psyche to bring stuff up that needs to be brought up and dealt with. Uranus helps us individuate away from our childhood story because all of us, it's a lifelong process, even if you had great parents, growing up and maturing is having to face the parts of your life from your childhood that were difficult or even traumatic that need to be healed. Um, they have to be dealt with, okay? So there, this is one of those full moons where it's so core to our individual identities. Venus and Mars, 
Libra and Aries, okay? That's the male and the female, well, the female and the male aspect that we all carry. You can call this the anima and the animus. And many times we tend to, in our love lives in particular, we tend to project onto other people, our conscious sexual, you know, if we're, if we're heterosexual, we'll project onto other people our expectations of who it is we think that they are or how we think they're going to react to us or how we think that they, you know, should react. This is a particularly, uh, this is this, the word trigger. When I looked at this, I'm like, this is a highly triggering kind of a full moon with this T-square. And it's in particular, those core themes of who am I? Can I find, if you're looking for a romantic partner, can I find a partner? You know, a lot of tears possibly. I mean, I was crying last night because of just feeling sad for myself, you know, like feeling sorry for myself. I'm like, will I ever find someone that understands me the way that I need to be understood? And just kind of feeling actually almost resigned to the fact that I don't think I ever will. That's where I was at last night. And I'm kind of like, okay with it. So with this T-square, the way to work through T-squares is you always move over to the opposite side and you finish off the part that's missing, right? Which is cancer in this case, late cancer, that third decan of cancer, which is the mother, it's the womb. That is returning and going back to your roots, healing. Now, a whole other layer to add to this, to our little play here. Well, let me back up here. Let's just talk about Mercury and Chiron are together, two and three of Aries. Mercury just moved into Aries just yesterday, day before yesterday, yesterday, this week. And so Mercury has moved out of its shadow from our Mercury retrograde in March, where there was a lot of fuzzy thinking. 29 degrees of Pisces, see? Last degree of Pisces. Dreamy, fuzzy, like what's reality? What's not? What's fantasy? False promises. Um, people saying they're going to do something in their relationships, like saying they're going to commit to someone, and then but they're not really all the way in. Saying that they care about someone, but they're maybe not all the way there or they have something else that is not has not been revealed yet. Okay, so that was kind of March and then into the first two weeks of this month. Now, last couple of days, all, especially anybody who's cardinal, if you're Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, you have especially probably had information that's come to your attention uh, that is different from what you maybe thought that it was, or was something you've been waiting to figure out or to learn. So, with this full moon, if we talk about now the, the deep chart. I'm not going to go into all the different points in the deep chart. Oh, actually, let me just add this. Mercury conjunct Chiron in Aries, wounds. All right, we're, we're going to do some repair work. It's a very good time to do repair work to your story, especially as it relates to your sexuality, your body, your right to be essentially who it is that you are. Aries is the essence it's the it's the intention behind the creation of something okay it's so like let's say for example two people come together and make love All right that's an Aryan act that's Aries that's Mars and let's say they, there's a pregnancy that comes from it okay the next step after the act of love making is you know fertilization of the egg and that kind of thing so it's the actual initial originating intention is Aries. And when Mercury is in Aries, it tells us this has to do with our collective understanding and perception of our stories. So if, it, if for you, if you have aspects that are being formed to two, three, you know, the early degrees of Aries, then you in particular are learning something right now. It's really important for you to learn. And it might hurt and it might make you cry. It may make you feel sad. It may be very wounding. You yourself may have made some decisions that have hurt other people. And there may be themes of shame or guilt, uh, a need for absolution, right? A need for forgiveness, okay? So <clears throat> if we talk now about the, we can look at the draconic chart, for example. In the draconic chart, the moon's in cancer, that around seven of cancer, I believe. So that is sort of, again, finishing this cardinal cross, the mother home. Where am I loved? Where am I safe? Where am I secure to be who I came here to be? And what I think is beautiful about astrology and what I love about my job is I get to meet with people of all different types. 
and we are all very similar to each other you know but also we're all different we all have these weird because humans are so complex that just little tweaks make for for variety you as you are messy um, imperfect flawed even mean sometimes or grouchy or depressed or whatever like there's a reason for it there's a reason for the way that you're built there needs to be something of everything right so the point with this full moon is where have you not been honest to yourself let alone where have you not been honest to the people in your life that you care about right so if you've allowed yourself to enter into a relationship with someone where it's their your self betraying this is a week today perhaps today and tomorrow will definitely be time of you like whoa what am I doing okay um, emotionally it's gonna feel possibly like hurt feelings for some people and for other people it's gonna be a jolt like a wake-up call like what the hell are you doing because you're the one who's hurting other people or you're the one that's hurting yourself or causing suffering Okay, so to me, this is about a big shift. So we're moving away from old patterns, Pluto conjunct South Node in Capricorn, old patterns that have to do with um, rigidly following somebody else's sort of set of, of rules that are fear-based. Okay, so like if you're a person who is um, you're in the closet let's say and you have been trying to be this perfect thing because it's what your parents want you to be well this is a time when that might change it's a time when you may feel like I can't do that anymore the pressure is too much I need to be who I really truly am um, also can be a time where if you are feeling hopeless at all or feeling down on yourself you know obviously there's always help out there um, but so if you need to get help of course get help but just know with full moons this happens every month and this one in particular is very potent so just breathe and be patient with yourself and allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling allow it to to pass through you trying to teach you something we have emotions for a reason um, and especially the more <clears throat> sort of compulsive and powerful emotions they're coming forward to try and say something that your conscious mind is trying to perhaps repress so if you need to talk to someone do this is a time when you know especially moon square pluto right now as i'm recording this is a time of emotional upheaval it can be a time of compulsive and obsessive emotions it can be a time where you just are feeling stuff and you don't know why you're feeling what you're feeling like today in fact the last two days I personally have felt really like dizzy and just kind of like headache and spacey and all that stuff you know headaches kind of mercury and stuff conjunct chiron and it was it's it's here to teach it's here to teach you something you know, for me it's like drink water dum dum <laughs> okay so if we talk about the technique that I use which is I call this the deep chart and this is something I have not yet it's a, a book that I'm going to be writing uh, that it's an incredible technique and it adds a whole other layer so in the deep chart I feel like it's the deeper it's like the uh, sort of in conjunctionis or it's the conjunctionis rather of the opposites it's the, the blend of the tropical which is our apparent world that we see with the draconic which is more of an abstract it's not a real chart it's a sort of hypothetical chart it's almost shadow material and you put them together you marry them in a sense and then it uncovers the deep chart so in the deep chart the moon is going to be in Virgo it's early Virgo and what is Virgo all about Virgo's Chiron so that brings us back to Chiron conjunct Mercury your story about yourself the things you say to yourself the things you believe about yourself that are perhaps not true um, or you may feel angry you may feel irritable you may feel like you're pissed off or or confused because you also feel sad and then you also feel just not even sure what you're feeling right moon in Virgo Virgo has to do with repair and healing Virgo is an archetype in fact right now the phase that the moon is in if you were to go outside and look at it tonight it's almost a full moon but not quite that is the aspect of Virgo okay from Aries Aries to Virgo has this quality of being a, an almost full moon but it's there's something about it that requires a little more work a little more patience a little more waiting right it's not time yet for the full moon okay so on the deeper level here we are we need to focus this weekend on healing emotional healing 
If you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling worried, if you're feeling guilty, if you feel ashamed, guilt is an emotion that comes up many times, not always, but many times when there's something that we've done that's hurt another person or hurt ourselves, and it needs to be repaired, it needs to be fixed. So it's not like, it's not there to just make you feel bad. It's there to hopefully uh, sort of compel you to take action, to fix it, all right? Um, so if you feel anxious today, if you feel worried, that's, that's really normal. Uh, take some time to maybe write if you can, if you like to write, if that helps you, or to do some meditation, to do some breathing exercises if you're just like really stressed out and just know it'll pass. Now, because of this T-square, <clears throat> if we think about, uh, we've got in the deep charts, like a mutable T-square, which tells us this is a time of transition. It's a time of change. We're moving away from the cardinal sort of elemental beliefs we may have about ourselves that are tied to our childhood. And now as an adult, the relationships we have that are romantic or our friendships. If you are chasing after the same types of relationships over and over and over that are, that, and you continue to be wounded or be the wounder, <clears throat> there's an element here. I mean, that's behaving in a way that's very unconscious. And all of us do this. This is not like not placing blame on anyone. We all, we all do things unconsciously. This full moon is going to, though, um, probably shock a lot of people that are not awake. It's going to wake them up in ways that are deeply personal and that do tie to the childhood story, usually. Okay. If that's not the case for you, then awesome. That's great, right? Good, I'm glad. But most of us this year, in our relationships, because that's what the theme is, or if we just had our first child, or we have lots of children and they're, you know, like I just had my first child go off to college, you know. So themes that have to do with family, and that have to do with work, and that have to do with what's your calling in life. How can you fix and repair that which was maybe broken or hurt or traumatized or wounded um, in your life, in your, you know, in your past? How can you directly fix where you are responsible for wounding or hurting others? How can you fix the things that you've done and, and uh, correct things moving forward? So there's an element to this full moon. And, and, and remember, full moons kind of are, cover sort of a, the month. So sort of think of it from you know, Friday out another four weeks. Um, the focus will be on healing. And for those people who are not willing to sort of look at things uh, in their own lives and in their own, just their own actions, the people that they might be attracted to, the relationships, lots of love triangles right now, lots of uh, mul you know multiple partners or people being worried, paranoid, or even deluded about there being other people, you know. Um, there's a good chance if you were feeling a sense of something not being right in March, um, there's a good chance that you'll find out why if you haven't already this week, that you'll find out why sort of over the course of this next few days. So again, be gentle with yourself, be patient with yourself and with others. If you're the one who is dealing with someone else and they're having a meltdown uh, or they're having like a freak out, it's, if you're in a good spot, then wonderful. Do your best to stay grounded and to stay centered. The end of the day, what is it that we use astrology for? Why do we bother? Why do I spend my whole day, like this before I do my readings, I do, uh, I actually read. I'm working through a bunch of different books right now and I write in the morning. And um, why, do my, why am I so obsessed personally with this, with this exploration? I'm, ex I'm obsessed because I love people, first of all. And there's huge, a huge sense of, of uh, accomplishment and sort of gratitude, not gratitude, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, fulfillment, I guess. When you're able to help another person consciously understand something that they haven't yet been able to understand, it's a key. Astrology is the reminder that we are all on the same tracks and cycles of time. We just are born into the system at different moments in space time. So we are born into the, comp the very complex system we have. And point being, we, we do move through as souls together. We're here to help each other. We're one. We are on a rock in the middle of nothingness, 
but also part of this incredibly elegant system, our, our solar system. And it's really a big clock. We're just hanging out on one of the gears, basically, more or less. So with astrology, with this full moon, the big themes, as I said, tie into your sense of identity, male, female, uh, sexuality, your relationship to your parents, your relationship to your childhood and home, and now as an adult, if you're a parent, what that looks like, marriage, pregnancy, those big decisions. That's all the stuff that we're dealing with right now. And if you're someone who has, well, I'm not going to call out signs necessarily right now, but a lot of people with Jupiter and Neptune, basically if you're Sagittarius, because Jupiter's in Sag right now, being squared by Neptune, be really careful about the story you're believing. Um, it's like our Sagittariuses, our Pisces, I have a Virgo, Mercury, and Venus, but they're earlier, so it's kind of past them. But And then, of course, Gemini. I've had so many Geminis lately kind of coming into my space that have been having a lot of choices to make, a lot of big decisions. Do I go with this person or do I go with this person? And the two options are sort of, do I go with, I'll use all my guy, these are like guy friends that I have. Do I go with this girl, like literally who's way younger than me, like 20 years younger than me? Or do I go with someone who's closer to my age and enter into a relationship that's more of a real relationship and not the fantasy? Now, the fantasy relationship, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's anima work. That's you working on your inner female, basically, your idealized sort of, there's, there's a little theme here, a little element of um, men when there's the Peter Pan syndrome, uh, you know, wanting to save the father from being stuck and trapped, you know, in a, in a marriage, basically, to the mother, um, if he saw his mother and father very unhappy. And there's an element of, to the male not wanting to become the unhappy bad father. And so in order to do that, they'll go after women that are that they know where they know consciously and rationally like this is what am i doing this is like i don't really actually want to marry this person or be with this person long term this is just never going to work out but there's this part of them that it's almost like they think they can escape one of the big realities of life which is you know we're all going to die one day that's one of this unfortunate realities as well as the reality that um you yourself may have Capricorn expectations you put on yourself that you may feel like you are failing, right? That's Pluto and Saturn and Capricorn conjunct the South Node. What are those expectations? So your story, your expectations, your rules, your things you're afraid of, um, et cetera, that's, you get to write that story. So a lot of my, as I say, my Gemini friends are dating, that are dating younger women. Um, there's still something there that they're trying to figure out for themselves, which it's been very interesting. I've had actually three different Gemini guy friends who've come to me and been like, I was dating this girl. And then I like had a moment where I just sort of woke up. Thank you, Neptune. You know, Neptune's right in the middle of Pisces right now. So all of our mutable signs are getting hit by Neptune's sort of woo. Like, am I in dreamland right now or am I in reality? What am I doing? Jupiter then comes along in Sagittarius and is really throwing um, all of this. <laughs> what is the truth? So anyone who's Sagittarius lately, it's funny because I thought, you know, I was first looking at Jupiter and Sag, I'm like, oh yeah, great for Sagittarians, it's going to be a good year for them. Yes and no. It's like they're really being, their feet are being put to the fire, so to speak, when it comes to what it is they're believing and buying into. Um, and their story that, like, in relationships in particular, am I being honest with myself and with this other person about what it is I'm really wanting here? Or is this some sort of fantasy, basically. So with my Gemini friends, a lot of them have this other older female that is there, you know, close in age to them. Because I'm 41, almost 42. So a lot of my guy friends, you know, I get to kind of, and I have a lot of friends of different ages. So it's kind of fun to see all the, the variations on the theme. But the Gemini friends are sort of taking a step back and they're s stopping for a moment to kind of reconsider what is it that I'm really, really wanting. And a lot of them were dating someone in, as of the last um, probably three years or so, where they were dating someone that they liked and they're friends with this person, but there was a really lots of projections, a relationship with a lot of kind of uh, misunderstanding on both sides. Two stories that were coming together that weren't the truth of what the two people were. 
expectations um, or sort of fears about this person or about that person, you know, just this back and forth game. And now Sagittarius, you know, Jupiter and Sagittarius is like, what's the truth? And so I love that many of these Gemini friends have dabbled with the fantasy side of things, dating a person who, you know, from a distance is, um, seems attractive and beautiful and reminds them of when they were in their 20s, right? Remi it reminds them that there's still hope for them, that, you know, maybe if they didn't have children yet or if they feel like they failed in some way, they didn't get married or that I live in Utah, so that's kind of a common bachelor uh, shame theme is um, even if they're like, oh, I don't want to get married, like there's a deeper, that's not true. There's a deeper core belief that they've culturally grown up with that says to be a man, you get married and have kids, right? So there's a sense of I'm a failure, but if I'm dating someone who's much younger, there's still the possibility that I can make that happen for myself. And it's almost like this other person transports you back in time. So, and in fact, midlife crisis, when you're that age, um, if you were to do a midpoint chart, between your birth and the date like of today, it puts you back into the 90s, which would be when these people are being born. So you see, you're you're going back to try and rebirth and reparent actually yourself and your own life. You're trying to rewrite your story through a relationship with another person. And that's totally normal, but it's also totally, uh, it doesn't really work. I mean, it does if you realize what you're doing or else you just keep doing it over and over again. So the moral of the story is, this is a very personal full moon. All the full moons are personal, right? It all has to do with how are you going about figuring out for yourself um, your sense of emotional security and belongingness in the world. And this one in particular is in relationships with others, romantic relationships, and also ones that have to do with diplomacy, fairness, tact, using manners, being kind, right? Creating beauty in the world rather than ugliness. This moon also forms an in conjunction to Venus. So our two female, as well as kind of, a, you know, it's out of sign, but sort of in conjunct Mercury as well. In conjunctions, this particular in conjunction is a Scorpio aspect, meaning the moon is our faster planet. She is on stage. And in fact, if you kind of look at the chart, she's sort of by herself too. She's on stage and she is singing her aria, exposing herself. And she's perhaps, we have Venus at the almost 20, it's 20 degrees Pisces. So she's hoping still for this vision or this dream or this fantasy that she has about love and about it and, and about kindness and oneness and like unconditional love. And at the same time, she's recognizing that perhaps she's been putting herself in the shadows, so to speak, right? And that, that um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's lots of breakups over the course. I mean, there have been some. And if there are breakups and get back togethers and or relationships that are based and founded on falsity, falsehoods, uh, conscious falsehoods, which is unfortunate, as well as those where we, we're with someone and we want to make it work, but we kind of aren't all the way in, that, that as well. So those are my generalized, that's my the general take on this full moon. Um, hopefully, if you're in a position where you've been the one the heartbreak, or, you know, carrying the heartbreak, then this is a time for you to, to, to take, take a few moments this weekend to think about and to write down maybe. Um, in fact, my very dear friend that I shared, Rachel, I shared her uh, tarot channel with you guys. We're going to do a fire ceremony. And what's really neat, I just barely read this week that <clears throat> in Europe, Northern Europe and Germanic villages and, uh, and early, sort of the early years of Catholicism, uh, this is also Scandinavia and France, but, and England, there were these fire ceremonies right before Easter. There was a blending of, you know, the pagan holiday, pagan holiday and Easter. And it's beautiful. This is Aries energy. People from the village would all bring up stick of wood and they would build a big fire. Yes, Pisces. See everybody bringing a stick of wood? The oneness. We make this big pile of wood and then we light it on fire and we burn it. That's Aries. And it becomes ash. And then everybody would take either ash or they would take a stick of wood that was burnt home and they would use it like for the year. So 
so this is kind of Pisces into Aries. This is the rebirth process of, and, and then of course Easter is this idea of this rebirth of Jesus. So it is a really good weekend for you to say, what is it in my life that I need to just put to rest? What do I need to burn off? What do I need to um, refine? You know, in the refiner's fire. This is also Moon in Virgo. What am I doing in my life that is not healthy for my body, for my mind, for my soul, for my spirit? What am I putting in my vessel that's harmful to me, to me and, and, and then causing me to be harmful to others? That's something else I will add. My Gemini friends, all of the ones I'm thinking of right now, and I love you for watching this, but this is the truth. When they drink, they become assholes. All three of them. Like they'd be, I'm like, who are you? What, what, like, what are you doing right now? There's an element to sub, you know, substance use. I, I believe it opens you up to allow, it allows shadow material out of you, but you don't have control over how it comes out. It's very damaging to you and to others. So maybe some pondering on that thought. And other than that, I just um, send everybody, you know, thoughts of love and Hope that this full moon is one where you can make a little list of things you don't want, burn them off, and let's let's start new and fresh, okay? And then the sun will move into Taurus, and that's when you get down to business. And anyway, all right, guys, best wishes. <laughs>